Well, there are countless videos, YouTubes, websites, newspaper articles, and all stories about which technology is going to be the game changer that launches the industry of EVs into the mainstream acceptance. The trouble is, we already know the answer. We need someone to make an Ionic 5, an EV6, an ID7, a Model Y, or a Mach-E, or a Neo E7. Uh, with a range of 600 miles, it can charge in five minutes, and it costs £25,000. It's done. But is that what we really want? Are there alternatives that people have not yet seen? <laughs> yes, and they're already here. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Well, we've got to look back at why EVs aren't the smash hit a lot of people predicted and why there's a huge demand for hybrids. Now, the petrol heads will tell you, well, we don't want uh, EVs, don't want them, trust them, no range, takes too long to charge, they're rubbish, etc, etc. A much simpler reason could also be that while hybrids are almost exactly the same price as the old petrol version, they are many thousands, sometimes tens of thousands, cheaper than the equivalent electric vehicle. People might want electric, but they're not prepared to pay those ridiculous inflated prices. Full stop. In a time of high interest and inflation, cheaper is really good. Now, anyone can claim a Dasher Spring is cheaper than the cheapest BMW, but that's, that's not a sensible comparison. But a BMW X1 is 34 grand while the BMW iX1 is 45 grand, 11 grand difference. An Audi A5, that's just replaced the A4, is 42 grand. The e-tron Q4 is 52 grand, 10 grand difference. Peugeot 3008, hybrid 33 and a half, while the e E3008 is 45 grand. All these prices, list price, I know there are deals to be had. EV price parity is nowhere near here yet, uh, so people could be choosing just on price. Well, I want an Audi, but I can't afford their EV, so I'll buy something else. I'll buy petrol, I'll buy their petrol version. If you make EVs cheaper and uh, they need to reach price priority, price parity, that might change. But what if that's not the answer? What if you could have an EV that you never have to stop to plug in? <laughs> Sounds too good to be true, but that was advertised over a year ago by the BBC, very quietly and is already being trialled in both, well, both in Norway and France, but now Sweden as well. No, the answer's not what you're thinking. Nobody can make an EV that never needs charging. That is not what I said. I said what we want is an EV that never needs to stop to charge. Under road charging. Ideas really simple. Install charging loops, pads, cables, whatever it is, underneath the road service, in your EV, you have a smaller battery and a charging loop, receiver, pad, coil, or whatever it is. And as you drive, the car receives power from the road. If the power is not, is not sufficient for the driving needs, let's say you do 90 miles an hour, then the battery tops it up. If the power is more than you need, stuck in a traffic jam, it charges the battery. So picture the scene, right? You can't charge at home. Good news for you can't, who can't. Your EV's outside, it's got less than 50% state of charge, and you need to get to Cornwall or Scotland. Don't know why I point, I don't know which way we're facing. Um, at sensible speeds, you could drive 300 more or more miles to your destination non-stop, and then arrive with your battery at 100% state of charge. Wow! You could spend the weekend there, and it's probably Scotland or Cornwall, no, no systems around there to charge it, so you're just running on your battery. And then just before you head home, um, you need to get back on the motorway, and then you can arrive back home with 100% state of charge. A full EV with no need ever to stop and charge. People are going to say, pipe dream, fantasy island. No, it's actually already being installed in both France and Norway. Oh yes, and Sweden, for all you petrol heads who scream, well, we can fill up in less than five minutes. I present one of the contenders which has just driven 100 hours, not miles, hours driving without stopping, without charging. Well, without stopping to charge, should I say. Well, stick that up your exhaust pipe and smoke it. Well, seriously, there's an awful lot happening in the direction we are heading today may not be where we end up tomorrow. 
So, petrol heads, let me tell you now all the reasons you're going to think of why it won't work. Can you imagine digging up every single road in the UK uh, to lay cables? Oh, ridiculous. Price is ridiculous. And the congestion will destroy the economy. And the price they're going to charge will be ridiculous. Nobody can afford to... But the manufacturers actually claim they can lay a mile of this charging system per night with virtually no visual impact on the road infrastructure. Seems to me that's a bit quicker than my local motorway, which has spent the last two years trying to turn a 10 mile stretch into a smart motorway. Well, if that's smart, it should do it itself overnight. But that's, that takes months or years. Imagine if you could lay these cables on that same length in just a week. Well, initially designed for HGVs, which emit proportionately huge quantities of pollution and CO2. They're also ideal for buses. And in France, where they're installing this, they intend to make them available for all EVs at us. Imagine no charging stops, no range, range anxiety, meters going up, and zero pollution or CO2 at the roadside. Oh yeah, imagine never having to come home and plug your EV in again. Imagine never having to buy or use a home charger. Imagine motorway services where the car park charges your EV while you eat. Oh, I'm getting carried away. We've already got that. Oh, imagine a hotel where you can park overnight and while you... Yeah, it does that as well. Anyway, uh, just getting a bit carried away. But that already exists. But you get the picture. For the 40% of potential EV owners who cannot charge at home, this could be the answer. And of course, it saves billions of tonnes of precious resources. Instead of installing a whopping big battery, EVs would only need a small one to cover specifically those areas where the road charging is not installed. In time, you could find that EVs end up with battery packs little bigger than a modern hybrid. Okay, just getting away with all with myself in all of this, but it's under trial, that's all. It's working, so they know it works. It won't be available with decent coverage for a while. Uh, there'll be some motorways bringing it in. But imagine the benefits to the government if they get behind it. You see, all HGV lorries belting down the road with zero pollution must be their dream. All buses and coaches, zero emission. What a, what a target. EVs no longer needing home charging, or indeed any other charging. You see, if the government makes a motorway like the M6 or the M1, uh, fits it with this charging facilities, builds it in, uh, and does it at a sensible price, wow, you don't need anything else. And before you say it, nobody has any idea how much they'll charge, if they charge at all. See, a government at the moment may decide to no longer offer cash subsidies, grants or tax breaks or incentives, towards the EV charging infrastructure, and instead use the same money direct to the companies to install this on our major motorways and on major city routes. OK, back to the negatives. I know these are heading my way from all the EV haters and deniers and doubters. Loss of fuel duty, how are they going to cover that? Total cost, EVs catching fire, burning and setting the M6 on fire. The list is going to be endless. But we need this sort of thinking for our future. Uh, no, not, not their sort of thinking. This sort of technology thinking for our future. Which can't just continue as we are. This might just be the way forward. Or is it? Comments down below and thanks for watching. I'm Dave. If you've enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And it would be a great help to us if you join as a Patreon member and you support the channel. We couldn't do this without our existing Patreon members. Thanks very much to them. I'm Dave.